In the second part of the titration lab, uh, we are going to use a different method, and we are going to use a pH probe. So the pH probe is connected to the LabQuest, of course, and we're going to walk through the steps on how to set up and calibrate the LabQuest. So the first thing I needed to do was connect the pH probe to the LabQuest channel 1, which it already is. and now I need to set up the actual experiment that we're going to be running. So in order to do that, I need to find the mode or hit the mode button because the default setting for the LabQuest is time-based. Uh, we don't want this to be time-based. We want to be able to enter in our own values. So we tap mode and we're going to change this to events with entry and the name it's going to be the volume the units will be in milliliters we're going to hit OK all right so what that's going to allow us to do is to enter in the volume after every increment that we add from the burette. Now, we also should calibrate the pH probe, and to calibrate means to give the pH probe a better set of bookends so it can better interpolate the values. The pH probe is pre-programmed, but the older it gets, the more often we need to do something like this. So in order to calibrate, we're going to go to sensors, calibrate, pH, calibrate now. All right, so now I'm going to take the probe. Notice that it's got that little glass bulb in the bottom that's very delicate, so we've got to be careful not to break that. And we're going to stir it in the pH 4 buffer. While we're doing that, the live voltage reading will be correlated with the pH internally through the LabQuest. We're going to wait until the uh, value doesn't seem to be changing anymore. And it seems to be steady here, so we're going to go ahead and enter the known value, which is the pH. And the solution's pH is 4.0. So now, because I'm changing solutions that the pH probe is in, put it in the rinse beaker. And we're going to use the other extreme, which is the base buffer. And we're going to wait for the pH or the voltage to stabilize. Seems like it likes it there. So the pH is 10.0. And we're going to keep that value. And we're going to say we're OK. Notice that we see the pH starting to jump.
So this is the result of the titration curve. Now this is typically called an S-curve because of the shape it makes. Any more base that I add is going to contribute here to the top shelf. Now I could keep going, um, but it's generally not that important because the most important part of any pH curve is here in the middle section. The steepest portion, the jump here, the midpoint of that steep curve is the point where the moles of acid equals moles of base. And that's kind of hard to tell on a typical S-curve. So what we want to do is we want to create a calculated column and we want to apply a little calculus. So I'm, first I'm going to stop the experiment and I'm going to go to analyze and or actually I'm going to go to data table, table, new calculated column, name. This is the first derivative. I'm just going to call it D1. And so the derivative curve looks like this. And the result of taking the derivative is that we get an inflection point, right? The point where the change in the slope, the peak of which right here is when the sl slope changes from changing to positive to changing to negative. So that point right there, the volume at which that point takes place is 11 11.62 milliliters. That is the volume of our equivalence point. So now that we've finished the experiment, we're going to want to port over our data from the LabQuest to our iPad. And on your iPad, if you don't already have it, you should install the graphical GW app right here. And we're going to tap new experiments. And we're going to go to data sharing. We want the camera to be on. And we're going to say OK. Now over on the lab quest, we're going to go to the connections setting. It brings up a QR code. Oops. Got to redo that. And now the lab quest, or, or the iPad, has latched on to the QR code. We're going to hit connect. And now we have our data on our iPad. So the benefit of this is that we can actually get a high resolution picture and take a snapshot of the graph. Now, I can take a snapshot of this graph, and I can also view the original curve by changing, selecting the, uh, the label on the y-axis and choosing pH instead. Or I can get them both, although it might be cleaner. There's our original curve. There's our first derivative graph. So you are to include the pictures of the two, whatever graph you used to determine your data. Although it's nice to have the S-curve as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take a snapshot of both of these and include them so that you guys can use them.